How's it going, Dawn of War 2 fanboys? Hope you're feeling rowdy and ready today because we've got a game between the Chaos Lord and a Hawk boss. We've got initial mink rocking Chaos Lord today, and we've got Fathom playing as the War boss. And straight away, Fathom is being Fathom, being very eccentric here. He's opting for no second boy purchase. Very rare you would do that. In fact, I don't think optimally you would ever do that. But, you know, this is Fathom. Let's see what he's going to do with it. Now, I hope that it means he's going to get more tier 1.5 units. I hope that it, it isn't some sort of attempt at fast tech. Because if you attempt to fast tech with only one boy, well, I think you're going to struggle. I think you're going to get gem bash quite easily. But we'll see. He might go for, like, double storm boys into the end or something. Which, if you can survive the initial attack on your gen farm, that might happen if your opponent realizes, hang on got two squads of boys here if you can survive that push then yeah that build would be very strong because storm boys scale amazing into tier 2 but we'll see initial minx You're playing quite aggressive here capturing the contested power node the first thing with the chaos lord now now he's been a little bit defensive though with csm they could go out and just scout what's here see that there's double gens gone down straight away could be an easy take really We'll see. So, so far it's actually going quite in favour of Fathom. Though I do... I question why he's only gone for double gens given that he's got only one boy. That doesn't really make much sense. As you can see now he's floating wreck when it comes to like storm boys. Yeah, he, he floating. I mean, he was... He could have got it faster if he did it like 40 wreck. He said 40 wreck, but I don't think that's worth it. I'd have just gone for the triple gens, fuck it. Either way, he should replace the gens next, I think. Because now he's going to be over on requisition again. Especially if he does a good job mitigating bleed, which you can see he is actually doing with the slugger boys. And that's really important here, if you're going to go for this heavy gen play, then you really do need to be making sure that you mitigate. Because all the requisition, you're going to need to build more units, especially tier 1.5 units. Initial Mink actually blob capping there with Veritix and Kiss. Like Initial Mink is not really on his top farm here. So we'll see what that means. I find it very odd that Initial Mink is going for Chaos Havocs in this instance. I mean, I get that Chaos Havocs are good against the War Boss, but. He mustn't have realized that Fathom has only got two squads of boys here. Because. I mean, if the enemy has only got two squads of boys, it's pretty obvious that they're going to be going for Storm Boys. You're not going to get Looters, because then the Chaos just has to get Raptors and they're going to run Rampant all over the Orc competition, right? But you're going to get Pain Boy? Then you've got no DPS. Your DPS comes from Boys. Pain Boy is a force multiplayer. So Mink should have seen that, and so he shouldn't have been purchasing the Havocs even before he seen the Storm Boys. But anyway, he's seen the Storm Boys. So he swapped the Noise Marines, which is fair enough, but it's funny because Noise Marines do really good AoE short range damage, but it's AoE damage over time, essentially. You know, it's, it's not bursty damage, so it's countered really well by the Pain Boy. So we'll see how this fares. You see the Sluggers running in there under the Pain Boy here. Noise Marines doing what they do best, being very, very noisy. Tried his best, but ultimately died to an old war boss. I mean, that's really quite an un. I, I, I think it's a bit of a shit death, really, isn't it? Dying to an orc. I get it, orcs are vicious creatures, but if I was off to war, you know, I'd want to die fighting in the Emperor's name, killing a few evil heretics, not getting wrecked by an orc. Oh, nice, Marine. 
Sprite Champion finally getting upgraded on these ticks. What about the other guys? Okay, they have it, but they're not in the combat, unfortunately, so that's a bit awkward. We do see, oh, we see Bang Bang Hammer and Cyborg implants on the war boss now. But the Cyborg implants give him that big stomp. Really nice counter against heretics. It makes the stomp not only have bigger range and stomp, but more, more damage. It actually uses to wipe out heretics on a tree. See how hard it would be for these Sprite Champion, though. And here we're going to see the power of these Grand Champion instantly proccing a special attack against those little boys. They've got no chance. Knocks them straight back down the hill. But even if he didn't get lucky there and proc the special attack, obviously AC takes are going to beat the Sluggers. I think Fathom was trying to use the Burners there in Rage Sands just to hurt them without getting melee. And I like that play. Unfortunately, they're quite spread out here anyway. They need to be melee. But now with the Pain Boy support, Storm Boys should be able to take on these Heretics very easily. This is going to be a trickier engagement. The CSM there and the Chaos Lord. And the Pain Boys a mile off. What the hell was that jump for? That was very weird. I mean, it's like he was acting on pure impulse. He's seen the CSM, so he's like, easy targets for my power melee. But the worst Iron Champion Heretics were right there. Oh my god! What the hell was that? What? Jesus Christ! Was that like a Bang Bang Hammer special and a Cyborg Implants in one? That was crazy, I've never seen anything like that. Guys, go back and watch that. What the hell was that? I'm gonna have to see that in the replay myself. Unfortunately, you know, I can't rewind this replay system. That was crazy. Look, the Big Stomp does more damage, but it doesn't do that much damage. I think he rocked the, the special attack on the Bang Bang Hammer, which does huge damage by the way, way more damage than any normal tier 1 weapon, it's really quite crazy. And then got the damage of the Cyborg Implants Big Stomp at the same time, finished it off with the Bang Bang Hammer, that was incredible damage. There goes an Aspiring Champion Heretic, Jesus. Wow, I still can't believe that damage, that's crazy. Can you imagine the Bang Bang Hammer used to be power melee Burrito? That is just... Ugh. Power melee Bang Bang Hammer and then the charge would knock over retreating units. Imagine playing Space Marines that shit. Big yikes. I really feel Fathom's composition here. I think Mink is going to struggle. But... You know, the Blood Letters Plague Marine combo is notoriously strong against So we'll see. Guess Lord needs to get some more upgrades as well. Maybe get the Drain Life to control the War Boss. Or maybe don't, maybe just go full tankiness. Because there's only one shooter boy, right? It'd be quite hard to deal with a fully upgraded tanky Guess Lord, you know, with that like Lightning Claws and the heal on hit. Or you could go Harness of Rage for the HP regen and that healer. Yield energy on every hit to power your shield. Either one would work. This is a weird thing I've noticed as well. The Bang Bang Hammer. Like it gets sync kills. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It gets sync kills, even though Elite Mod, you know, would remove sync kills if it wasn't for the actual last model dying in the squad. I found that very weird. I don't know how that interaction could happen. Oh my god, Nice Range, you're so loud. Jesus. Why are they louder than everything? But I know they're noise rings but come on guys. I'm hearing them across the goddamn map. Oh Gib Storm Boys. You know if he can get was in that those we're not gonna see the tanky firing it now. Firing up balls, okay, really. Who rises from these ranks? We're not gonna see the tanky case lord, we're actually seeing a spell cast case lord. Now let the galaxy burn is pretty brilliant against melee. But more so the HP high bonus stuff, and the problem that I see here is there's a pain boy who can heal a lot of the damage over time from the fireballs, and then obviously you're not going to kill the actual normal melee squads either. Now where are the Plague Marines? Plague Marines are actually gen bashing, okay? Fair enough. And the Death Dread is charging at the Plague Marines to tie them up in melee, so gen bashing is fine. Once you get into melee with them, they're not afraid. Weapons for the slaves of heresy. 
Especially the attack on the Death Trade doing some gigantic damage to the Plague Marine there. Really powerful special attack. Here comes the Let the Galaxy Burn. Let's see what it does to the Sluggers. Kind of a weird series of fireballs there. I don't know. I feel like he aimed it pretty well. He looked like he did. He did. They all just seem to miss. Blastmaster? Man, I feel like Blastmaster keeps hitting terrain or something. We're hearing it. We're hearing it. Uh, okay, well, he's destroyed that wall now, so maybe he can fight for Oh, Grenade Launcher Heretic's interesting. I find that actually really strange because there's no anti melee for initial mink right now. Death Dread comes along, flushes out the Noise Marines using its very powerful burners. Burners and bits, but check out the damage against the gens here. Okay, he's attacking ground and he's missing. This is quite risky. The Inferno Bolts do actually do okay damage to the Death Dread, especially the Plasma Gun on the Aspiring Champion, that does really solid damage. For a non-anti-vehicle weapon, it does do solid damage. But okay, so are going to tie them up. The Plague Marines are now retreating. Wow, and the special attack from the Death Dread. But the Blastmasters saved the CSM, they were nearly going to go down. Wow, lost the Aspiring Champion. Alright, we're gonna see the Maul. I guess because he's got the Armor of Inferno, the Maul makes sense. You don't need the Power Melee in this matchup. Like, everything on the field right now from the Orcs is Light Melee, so you don't need the Power Melee. Maul is actually cheaper, and it has a better ability for controlling all the enemy melee. The Lightning Claws. The only reason you'd go the Lightning Claws would be if you were doing what I was saying and going Icon of Corn or the Dark Halo build. Because the Lightning Claws attack a lot quicker than the Blood Maul, so you prop these. <laughs> Swear to God, Last Masters were never this loud. Like, I don't know why they so goddamn They will silence us! Anyway, the Blood Boss isn't like that, so he silences one of the Noise Marines. I'm going to turn his attention to the Leg Marines. Again? Yeah, look at that. He propped the special attack literally as he was using that stomp. I actually don't think the Leg Marines have that stomp in the room, kind of all. Look at the damage this guy does with his tier 1 weapon. Such a brain. The Warboss just has such amazing weapons, all three of them. The Power Claw itself is a pretty average weapon, given that you're paying 50 power for it. It doesn't do like crazy damage, you know, it does significantly less than the Hive Terran Crushing Claw. But it's the fact that it's a boss. You get the charge, you get all these other really powerful HP regen armors. And then of course you get the globals as well, it just makes the Power Claw whoa, 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 whoa. Makes the Power Claw just so much better than it would be on other heroes. Once again, we see the Plague Marines harassing the Gen Fan. They can't handle the Gen. Storm Boys gonna jump on them. They got the Bomber Boys, yeah they do. So I think one thing that a lot of people forget about the Bomber Boys, it increases their jump range by 15. That's huge. The, the maximum distance that standard small arms can fire is only 38. So it's like a good solid third of the firearm distance that you're increasing the jump range by. That's really strong. Great for an upgrade that only comes wreck, even if you're not going to use more that is a really good upgrade. But Bomb Boys is really hard, you should be using that for sure. Now Fathom's actually managed to get quite a lot of resources out of this going tier 3 in this instance, because everything that Initial Mink has really, I mean it just doesn't regret Fathom. What is concerning you here, he's got all this melee, and there's basically no hard melee counter, just the Chaos Lord. Chaos Lord's so slow, he keeps finding himself isolated on the sidelines. We see another pretty point blank like the galaxy burn, it hits everyone but the knob, which is pretty nice. Oh, and then Fathom just walks into the kill of the week. But he's only killed, oh, two boys have died, I was gonna say, oh wow, four boys died. I was say the pain point deal should be in the second, it should be much of that the galaxy burn damage gone, but... Not necessarily the case. Blastmasters showing their value even up against the Death Dread here getting the bot. 
solid damage on the approach. And for some reason, the death grid is prioritized the fast masters, when obviously it should be prioritized the flame rings because they've got their mobile snare. Is it really going to get out right now? Where are the CSM? Oh, it's heretics over here. They don't do such good damage against vehicles. Maybe with like a the ability for the grenade launchers, I don't know how much that does. Let's try to hit the stoppers with it and fail, so. They're going to have to back out of here. No, don't do it, mate. Jesus Christ. Oh, bolters, mate. I'm bolting them. Nice stuff from the stoppers, though, ensuring the escape. Fathom is floating like mental. Okay, finally you go to save three. Look, Fathom, if you're floating this much, why the hell do you not have any upgrades on your shooters? Come on now. You gotta get some upgrades on your shooters at this point. I mean, look. What could the rationale really be? I get it, you're not focusing on the shooters, but you might as well just get the upgrades, mate. Especially the big shooters, There's, you don't pay upkeep for them. I can see that I because obviously he costs upkeep, even if you're not playing with the shoes in combat, you don't want to pay the upkeep. But god, even if you pay the upkeep, look at his recognition right now, it's got so much. 670 rec, I mean. Fair play to Fathom, he's not been bleeding much at all, to be honest. But it's no surprise really, because there's not been any crazy LA scraps. Initial mid has only really got main units. So Fathom hasn't really had to commit to any fights, and it's very easy to predict when you're about to lose the model to the you get the training time. Anyhow, Fathom's now going tier 3, so this could be some crazy tier 3 action at this rate. I mean, Initial Mink has bought so little. Clearly he has been bleeding quite a lot, because his resources are looking nowhere near as good as Fathom's. I think Mink broadly has had worse end of the map control. In terms of resources at least, but somehow he's actually ahead in terms of BP. For now, fairly close at 293, ticking down fast for initial 267 for Fathom. Fathom is literally about to get a triple cap. And it's funny because initial Mink actually went to tier 3 first, yet Fathom is the one who went to first. With the knobs over halfway finished in the production queue, they're going to be coming out and likely, I suspect, counter it. There's no red for Terminators, and I really, well look, by the time the knobs get out and there's resources for the- Wait, when did the pain boy die? Oh my god, I didn't notice the pain boy. Terrible. I don't know. Anyway, by the time Initial Mink has the resources for a super unit, you will have seen the knobs, and obviously knobs, heavy melee, Really high HP, heavy melee squad. They would fuck up on that. So presumably he's gonna see them and then he's gonna go, okay, I need a grin. We'll see. Okay, he spotted the knobs. Pretty bad engagement for the knobs here. That's alright, they force off the. What? He... Why does anything think I can be Why? Why would you go for a Raid of Phobos against knobs? It's... Fathom has literally no range. The great thing was it's an anti melee so Go for the great and clean one. You've got loads of disruption. You can knock over the knobs with grenade launchers. You can knock over the knobs with sweeping doom. Let the galaxy burn and kill the weave. And then the great and clean one can knock over the knobs with a foul snare and with a cloud of flies. Come on, man. I like how Fathom's using the Death Dread to count the Last Master, that's nice. But obviously you don't want to use your Slugger Boys, because if they try and approach, they're going to get blasted by that thing. Again, Naked Shooter Boys are here, but they're obviously not really achieving a whole lot, because they're Naked I really don't know about this weird boy either. Perhaps Fathom got it because he expected blood letters coming out, and then obviously he used the bot vomit to control the blood letters. But in this instance, I haven't really seen him do a whole lot. Obviously, we against the gear slot, he's pretty useless because the weird boy relies on splash damage. Uh, so against single entities, he's not doing But here we go, the Land Raider Phobos is now spotted. 
Energy Drop was actually dropped on the Storm Post there, which is interesting. Obviously trying to go for the wipe of the Blastmaster. The Blastmaster at the moment is keeping Mink in the game to some extent by stopping caps onto the BP. So I understand if one needs to get rid of that. However, it's a bit questionable when the Mount Rider Focus is right there. So. Mr. Mick is getting pretty desperate at this point. I mean, looking at the BP situation, he is definitely behind the BP. Here we go, now we see the war boss moving in on the siege breeze, so we get a nice stun with a big stop. Here for it. His life connects to the assault cannon from the war boss. Now Bob's going to charge in. Bob's actually going to. They're going to get destroyed by the Blastmaster. They are, but they don't hit all the models. Frenzy is now one off, so they will get suppressed. Blastmaster's doing some really good damage to those mobs, as are the siege. Yeah, so basically, we need to get outside of the garrison once again. Over on this side, the Chaos Lord routed the weird by the Shoot Boys. It's not enough high DPS there against a tanky melee hero like that Chaos Lord. Perhaps if Fabi got some upgrades on the Shoot Boys, it would be a bit more DPS. Alright, well the Death Dread's on defense duty, and the Sluggers and the Pain Boy are hiding in the corner here, protecting these requisition points, which is fair enough. Fathom has time. Fathom has 267 BPs, it's Mink who lacks the time for 53 BPs. I like these players though, sending off the Plague Boys, trying to get the deep cap, they're obviously the best unit the Chaos has in this instance to get the deep cap. If you have blood letters, they might be better, you can teleport in, attempt it, you can get overwhelmed, bears out, you can count. Unfortunately, the Death Dread is there, and the Plague Queen, while it is AV, they can sell the Death Dread. And it's certainly not when it just walks into the regardless. But hey ho, he might actually get the unique cap of time, yeah, he does, wow. There you go. There is the mindless power of Plague Queen. This is not the victory you promised us. Mindless power. Chaos Havoc's coming out now, I like that player, so we can use them behind his Nand Raider Phobos. Control the mobs. Very strange decision to attack there by Fathom. Yeah, you can see we're getting a really nice defensive heavy ball to Havoc. Chaos Lord holding off really well on this far side of the map. I feel like he retreated pretty early there. I know the Wobbus is scary, but... I think that was an HP and the Echo and Pawn as well. We've already established that the shoot is basically relevant. Here comes Heavy Armor though. Heavy Armor. That's combined with Hard Boys. Wobbus very, very, very tight. I know you guys can't see it, but I'm shaking my head in real life right now. Just the mindless plague green decaps. I'm not even looking, it's just like, yeah, I'll just right click that BP with my plague greens. No problem with their tank. They walk straight into knobs, they U jammers, as well as the death dread, and I'm wiped. I mean, the, this is definitely not an issue makes best game. But it's best. So we've now got layered havocs. The other one. Oh, they're over here in the building. Now that is one thing that the Weird Boy does do pretty well. Don't take Garrison. Do not fear us. So the knobs get suppressed, then they get stunned, and then they get knocked over by the knobs. But now, here comes the problem. Stormboy's jumped off the havocs, so now there's no longer a suppression team. And now the knobs have Uji Choppers. Getting lots of buffs from their U-Jammers. Now that 
So that should be the game. Right. Boss has got loads of HP, he's got that heavy armor. Let the galaxy burn, now it's gonna be too late. Hang on. Are you kidding me? Initial Mink went with quadruple havocs in the end. I what the heck was this game? I don't even Quadruple Havocs, where did that come from? Okay. Fast tech, see the knobs, buy a foe boss into Quadruple Havocs. Mink, you have lost your mind. You've actually lost your mind, man. Anyway, guys, that was a cast. This is definitely going to get uploaded on Saturday, because that was mental. Hope it was enjoyable nonetheless. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and comment down below so you help us in the eternal war that we fight against the YouTube algorithm. That is going to be all from your boy Torpid, signing.